upon a time, in a faraway land, a young prince lived in a shining castle. Although he had everything his heart desired, the prince was spoiled, selfish, and unkind. But then, one winter's night, an old beggar woman came to the castle and offered him a single rose in return for shelter from the bitter cold. Repulsed by her haggard appearance, the prince sneered at the gift and told the old, turned the old woman away. But she warned him not to be deceived by appearances, for beauty is found within. And when he dismissed her again, the old woman's ugliness melted away to reveal a beautiful enchantress. The prince tried to apologize, but it was too late for she had seen that there was no love in his heart. As punishment, she transformed him into a hideous beast and placed a powerful spell on the castle and all who lived there. Ashamed of his monstrous form, the beast concealed himself inside the castle with a magic mirror as his only window to the outside world. The rose she had offered him was truly an enchanted rose, which would bloom for many years. If he could learn to love another and earn her love in return by the time the last petal fell, the spell would be broken. If not, he would be doomed to remain a beast for all time. As the years have passed, he fell into despair and lost all hope. For who could ever learn to love a beast?
my sights set on that one. The inventor's daughter? She's the most lucky girl I'm going to marry. But she's the most beautiful girl in town. Well, I know, but and don't I deserve the best? Well, of course you do. Right from the moment when I met her, saw her, I said she's gorgeous and I fell. Here in town there's only she who is beautiful as me. So I'm making plans to woo and marry We 
keep quiet, maybe he'll go away. I mean, I just need a place to stay. Poor fellow. Oh, God, to us. Agahart! Seriously? Marsha! Ah! It's so. <laughs> girls, girls, calm down. Don't tell me you're looking like that's gonna change your feelings for me. Oh, Good. Well, I guess if I'm, if I'm going to have a wedding, I better go propose to the bride. <laughs> That's you. The boys will play in the yard with the dogs. We'll have six or seven. Dogs? No, Belle. Strapping boys like me. Imagine that. So, what'll it be? Well, I just don't deserve you. Well, I mean, who does? But thanks for asking. Oh, you know that Belle always playing hard to get. She's hard to get. Is anyone? 
Austin, very pleased to make your acquaintance. Oh! Here for Dudley. Who are you? Bathy, drawn Fouché. This is impossible. And maybe Silva, you young. Well, no. What shall we just do here? Let me see. What <clears throat> got my drawers? Oh. Of course, the opera. Oh, this is beautiful. I know. Uh, but I'm not going to dinner. <laughs> of course you are, my dear. Well, he may be your master, but he's not mine. I'm sorry. This is all just happening so fast. That was a very great thing you did, my dear. We all think so. I'm going to miss my papa so much. Sure, child. I know things may seem like right now, but you mustn't despair. We're here to see you through. I hope that will be friends.
Chris. Now who's got Bill locked in a dungeon? A bee! A whole new monster's bee! <laughs> Fine, if y'all won't come at me, I'm gonna get along myself! Hey, no worries. He's always good for a laugh. <laughs> Crazy old Maurice. Hmm? Crazy old Maurice. The foo I'm afraid I've been thinking. A dangerous pastime. I know. But that wacky old coon is Bell's father, and his sanity is only so so. Now the wheels in my head have been turning since I looked at that loony old man. See, I promised myself I'd be married to Bill, and right now I'm evolving a plan. If I. Yes. 
horse as fast as she could. Night was falling, a storm was approaching, and it was getting hard to see. When she stopped to catch her breath, Belle heard a low and venting growling of the wolves. One wolf charged Belle head on, and she grabbed a branch to defend herself. Suddenly, the beast leaped out of nowhere and pulled the wolves off of Belle. Belle took cover of the wolves turned to attack the beast. One grabbed a hold of the beast's forearm and forearm, wounding him. The beast struggled to stay on his feet as he threw the wolves off of him one by one. Once the last big wolf was hurled away, he collapsed, exhausted and in pain. Belle knew that this was her chance to get away, to go home. But as she looked at the beast, that hideous creature who saved her life, she could not leave. Belle approached the beast and helped him to his feet. Then Belle and the beast slowly made their way back to the castle.
Well, it just so happens this is the perfect book to read aloud. Come here, sit by me.
I, I'm not sure about this. You must. I don't know if I can. You will know because you will feel it in here. And you must speak from the heart. Speak from all I can. You must. What are you afraid of? I'm afraid she might. She might what? Laugh at me. Somehow, my friends, you must find the courage to take that chance. I really don't think I can do this. You must. Master, look at the rose. It's losing petals of a warm embrace. You can do it, Master. I know you can. I, I really don't think I can do this. Yes, you can. Come on, now you can. Come on. Uh, that's it. 
breaks the bell! It's not about Chef's wife in return. That's ridiculous. And now it's too late. She's gone. I'm, I'm sorry, guys. Why don't we say this right now? I, I failed you again. Bye. We're done with you. I'm, I'm moving sorry. out. I, I'm moving out.
While the beast servants battled the villagers, Gaston made his way to the west wing.
go find your father. Marvin, Marvin, what's your name? Playing a villager and a narrator, 
Miss Bree Todd. Jane Bragg. Bethany Gerald. Celeste Ray. Matayla Ray. Emily Blankenship. Lindsay Castle. <laughs> Next, we had some gentlemen who volunteered to, well, they were voluntold and they agreed to it. They did a wonderful job as being our wolves. Elijah Wayne Blackburn. <laughs> Summon Almagomen. <laughs> Sir Dylan. So let's give him another round of applause. Our bookseller, Zach Ramey. Monsieur Dark, Cody Bradley. Madame de la Grande Boucher, Jordan Collier. Chip, Miss Sarah. Miss Katie Copley. <laughs> Lumiere, Miss Kendra Field. <laughs> Cogsworth, Savannah Stroud. <laughs> Maurice, James Allen Hayes. <laughs> LaFou, Marsha, which is really Martha McDaniel. <laughs> Gaston, Caleb Sprout. <laughs> the Enchantress, who was also a villager for me too, Miss Hennessis Ramirez. As I said, our narrator, Miss Bree Todd. <laughs> the Beast, Alex Miller. <laughs> and Beauty, Miss Bell, Aiden Watts. <laughs> now, I always like to introduce the cast first because they're out front doing all the stuff. And I want them out here when I introduce the people who made our amazing backdrop and set possible. So at this time, and, and I see you guys are out here, so this is awesome. You can wave to the crowd or nod or whatever you want to do. Set design, Mr. Dylan Caven. <laughs> Jeffrey Mouth.
Nelson, Brooke Haney, Liz Haney, Emily Ramey, Caleb Inglis, John Wilson, Miss Aiden Watts, help out also, Ethan Stanbridge, Kadeva Jackson, Tori Harper, Emily Kerr, Will Newsom, from Carpentry, Devin Crum, and Nora Saunders Jackson. I think that we definitely need to give our set director, set designer, a wonderful round of applause, Miss Andrea Prince. We also had assistance this year from uh, our music director, because this was way above my ability, Miss Michaela Gilkerson. Our sound engineers, Mr. Fred Dameron and Ms. Mary Isaac. Our lighting person today was Brandon Mullen for one performance, and then Ms. Cynthia Linville took care of us for the rest of time. Thank you. As you kind of gathered from all the names that I've called out, this is truly a Tulsa High School production. Every program in the school helps to make this possible. We have Mr. Crumb's carpentry classes. We have Mr. Maynard's business management, Sergeant Major Francis and Sergeant Lambert's ROTC programs, Mr. Justin Prince's broadcasting classes. We have Ms. Hazel Dameron, who gets stuff for us on the WFGH radio. Um, any program here, you name it, they help us. And that is why we always announce it as a Tulsa High School production. Let's, let's give all of our CTE programs a hand. I would also like to say that, you know, we live in such a wonderful community. And even though we don't have an auditorium, the community is so supportive of the arts. And some of you may have seen it when I put out a Facebook post because our microphones hadn't come in and we were needing help. You know, churches were offering up microphones. Uh, we did get to use one from Salt Peter, and I thank them. Uh, our neighboring school, where we're normally rivals, but Tug Valley loaned us 12 of their microphones, and I thank them. So let's give them a round. And for the record, I do know without a doubt, had Tug Valley not loaned us so many microphones, all of the other area churches would have stepped up and let us do this. Uh, there is one person that I often forget to thank. But my husband, thank you, Lindsay. and talking nothing but Beauty and the Beast or whatever production, and, and I appreciate him so much. Every faculty member, we also appreciate them. I think these two have something in mind. <laughs> you want to first thank We'd also like to thank Ms. Muncy because without this, Get dressed into this beautiful outfit you see. I hope you all enjoy the program. Have a wonderful night. <laughs>